What is going on guys, today we're taking down Biche, the Golden Eyed Beast and Black Myth Wukong. When you defeat this boss, he'll drop a specific item that you need to craft one of the best armor sets in the game. Now to get to him is a little tricky. You'll need to complete a series of tasks to unlock the secret area in chapter 5. But for today, we're just going over the fight. So let's get right into this fight and look at how I took him down. For starters, I suggest bringing in Wandering White, Ebb and Flow for the transformation spell, the Plantain Fan, a Pluck of Many, and Immobilize. Right when the fight starts, most likely he'll jump at you and then spit fire. If you can, try to dodge this, but dodge near his back legs. Focus on doing your damage on his back legs only. Try not to stay in front of him because that's where most of his attacks will come from. In my fight, he didn't kick back with his legs, so it seemed pretty safe. You do have to watch out for when he starts to slam around because he does have some ground pound abilities that do area attacks. But right away, if you see him get into a corner, you want to cast your plantain fan. Then follow that up with a pluck of mini. If you're lucky, you'll get him on the ground and then you and your minions can do a ton of damage. As soon as he tries to get up, hit him with Immobilize. Get some more damage in, but watch out for where you're standing. If you've noticed, around the map, there's lava pits. If you stand in those lava pits, you'll take burn damage. However, he won't take burn damage. That's his ideal place to fight. If you can, back up out of those lava pits and draw him away from that area. And don't forget to use your transformation spell if you want to get in some extra damage or if you're taking too much damage. Ebon Flow was a great transformation because it's a big beast fighting another big beast. It looks cool and he can block. But once you're out of your transformation, try to stay around his back legs and push up against a wall. This is a boss that likes to jump around a lot. And if he's backed up against a wall, he won't go too far, which is really good for you because you can keep on swinging that staff and getting some hits in. Like most bosses, he is a grab. And because you're so close to him, you will be susceptible to that grab. If he grabs you and throws you into the middle of the map, use Cloud Step to reposition yourself back behind him and closer to the wall. Now, as you lower the boss's health, he'll start switching up his attacks. He won't just be jumping around and swiping at you anymore. He can start charging at you, and trust me, you don't want to use pillar stance for obvious reasons. If you find yourself taking a lot of damage, it may be a good idea to go back and put some more points into your burn resistance. This boss can easily build up your burn meter and set you on fire which then you'll start taking damage over time. Couple that with his swipe attacks and this will be a short fight. Whenever you see him jump, he's preparing to do an attack. Cloud Step can save you a lot of times when you need to heal or if you need to do a counter attack. When you come out of Cloud Step, just be looking out because this boss is extremely aggressive. He'll easily sneak in one of his grabs at the end of his combos. Just try to look out for when he raises his hand up so you can see it coming. He caught me a few times and put me back into the middle of the map and set me on fire. Remember to dodge a few times to get rid of those flames if you find yourself set on fire as well. Remember to cast the Plantain Fan if you have it charged back up. And if you don't have a pluck of mini, you might have Wandering Right ready. You can use that spell because it doesn't use any mana. A good time to attack is when he jumps up into the air and throws two fireballs at you. You can use this time to get close to him and start attacking those back legs. And when you're dodging, try to dodge around him. This will make him turn his body and give you a little bit of time to prepare your next attack. Hopefully you have a charged up heavy attack that you can use. And during this fight, keep your eye on ebb and flow. You want to cast that whenever you can. And even though ebb and flow can block, you do not want to stand in that lava. And if he's jumping around, just dodge away from him. You don't want to try to take this damage on. If ebb and flow's burn meter gets built all the way up and he gets set on fire, it'll eat away at his health pretty quickly. And the same rules apply here when you're in your normal state. Position yourself near the back wall to try to limit his movement. As you get hits in, he may escape and get back into the lava. If you find yourself about to lose a transformation form, try to sneak in one of your heavy attacks before you get knocked back into your normal form. Now for this boss, I decided to go with the full heavens equal set. This includes the helmet, the chest plate, the gloves, the shoes, and of course, the staff. I put a lot of points into my burn resistance, and if you want to use a relic, you can use the flame orb. That gives you additional resistance to burn damage. And I also like using the Trailblazer Scarlet Gourd, and that's because when the gourd is full, that first sip, it'll replenish you to full health. This is just one of the ways that you can take this boss down. Let me know down in the comments if you plan on doing New Game Plus and going for that full Bull King armor set. I hope you enjoyed this one and learned something new. I'll catch you in the next one. You will seal your lips on this. Our family would be doomed.
If anyone knew the truth behind this child, 